Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the sparkling musical comedy, Girl Crazy, starring William Bendix, Doris Day, Joan Edwards, your host Gordon McRae, and the music of Carmen Dragon's Orchestra. Yes, tonight, another great musical comedy is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that also bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gordon McRae helping to bring you another in our series of musical successes. Tonight, the Railroad Hour Show Train presents the gay George Gershwin hit, Girl Crazy. When Girl Crazy opened on Broadway, it features such stars as Ginger Rogers, Ethel Merman, Alan Kearns, and Willie Howard. Tonight... Playing those same star parts, you'll hear Doris Day, Joan Edwards, yours truly, Gordon McRae, and in the comedy role of Skeeter Mulligan, the New York taxicab driver, that lovable lug, William Bendix. Dear Eloise, I take my typewriter in hand to write you this letter explaining how come I didn't keep our engagement in Brooklyn on the night of last June 29th. I was in my cab at Broadway and 48th Street, when all of a sudden a young fella throws a couple of suitcases in the back and says, Holland Tunnel, driver. Head west and keep going. Okay. Well, buddy, if this ain't the town you're looking for, you're out of luck because I'm out of gas. Now, relax, Mulligan. This is it. See that sign? Husterville, Arizona. Population male, 58. Female, zero. <laughs> no women. No wonder the place looks dead. Now, while I ask those cowboys over in the hotel veranda where we can get some gas, why don't you sort of mosey around and take a look at the sights? <laughs> what sights? When you've seen one grain of sand, you've seen them all. I'll be right back. Oh, okay, boy. Howdy, boys. Hi. Uh, where's your gas station? Ain't got one. Horses eat hay. Are you, uh, sure this is Custerville? Sure, I'm sure. You, uh, stopping overnight? Yep. A good long night. Two years, to be exact. My father owns the Churchill Ranch out here, and he decided I should have some interest other than girls. Oh. Mm -hmm. And with no women in this town, I see why he picked it. What do you fellas do here, anyway? Oh, mostly we just... Bide our time. Right, boys? Yeah. Bide your time? Yeah. You call that doing something? Yes, sir, I sure do, brother. I'm biding my time. Cause that's the kind of guy. I'm. While other folks grow dizzy, I keep busy. Biding my time. Come on, Churchill. If you're going to be here two years, you might as well get used to it. Well, I'll try. I'm biding my time. Because that's the kind of guy I'm. Beginning on Monday, right through Sunday. Biding my time. Next year, next year. Something's bound to happen This year, this year I'll just keep on napping And biding my time That's the kind of guy I'm 
there's no regretting when I'm setting Biden. 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 There's no regretting when I'm setting here and biding my time. Setting and biding my time. <laughs> What's that? Sound like somebody got shot. Another sheriff, will probably. You mean somebody killed the sheriff? Yeah, it happens around here pretty regular. Hey, looks like they caught the fellow done it this time. Now, here comes the mob. Oh, wait a minute. Let go of me. Who are you shoving? Get your hands Why, off it's me. Mulligan. Oh, this ought to be good. It will be. Lank Sanders is a tough customer to tangle with. Well, what are we waiting for? Three or four of you guys get on this roof and stir them up. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is all a mistake. I'm innocent. I didn't shoot the sheriff. Look at my face. Is it the face of a murderer? <laughs> wait a minute. Let me put it another way. <laughs> That's enough. Stir them up. Look, j- just let me say one more word. If I could only think of a word to say. Stop. That's the word. Thanks, Lord. <laughs> I'm, uh... Sorry to spoil you fellas' necktie party, but my taxi driver couldn't have shot your sheriff. It's less than ten minutes since we blew into town. Well, if that's the case, I reckon I owe him around a drink. No, you're talking. <laughs> I don't mind hanging so long as it's over a bar. Come on, boy. Hey, uh, Mulligan, you better stick to ginger ale. Hello, Jake. Hi, Molly. Well, this explains it. There aren't any women in this town, only angels. Well, Molly don't live here. She just works here in the post office. And here's a letter for you, stranger. I, I take it you're Danny Churchill. That's me. Hmm, a letter from Sam Mason. He wouldn't have written it if he'd known it would introduce me to the prettiest gal in Arizona. Hey, that's a thought. Do you deliver all the letters I get? Hmm? Yes. Well, I'm going to have everybody in New York write to me. Is... Uh, tell me. Is New York a wire wild town? Oh, New York's the most wonderful place in the world. So, uh, tell me, uh... You managed to keep busy? Yes, I managed to keep busy. Well, not too busy to go to a dance once in a while or play a game of tennis, I hope. <laughs> yeah, you got plenty to learn about the West Churchill. <laughs> well, so long. Jake's right. Jake's right, Mr. Churchill. You must think your father's place is one of those dude ranches. Dude ranch? Say, that's an idea. I never thought of that. What do you mean? Why, I'll turn Dad's place into a dude's ranch. Girls, cocktails, <laughs> dancing. Oh, you just watch what little Danny's gonna do for this town. And you. Now I'm the chappy to make you happy. I'll shine your shoesies and chase your bluesies. Oh, lady, would you oh, tell me? Could you use me? Nope. I'd shake the man out, put the cat out. I'll clean the garret and feed the parrot. Oh, lady, would you oh, tell me? Could you use me? Do you realize what a good man you're getting in me? I'm no Elkhorn Mason or Woodman who gets home at three. Now the gals who see me go soft and dreamy, but I'm a gander who won't philander. Oh, could you use me? Because I certainly could use you. What do you say, Molly? What do you say? Sorry, Mr. Churchill. But you're no cowboy, you're soft and howboy. I feel no muscle to fit the tussle. I must refuse you. I cannot use you. Excuse me. Well, now, give me a chance. No nightlife for you. The birds would bore you. The cows don't know you. A horse would throw you. You silly man, you, to ask me. Can you use me? Wait a minute. Though at love you may be a wizard, I'm wanting to know. Could you warm me up in a blizzard, say, 40 below? I think so. Your ties are freakish and these are weakish. Go to New York pub, stay in the store club, though you can use me. I certainly can't use you. And 
And so help me, Eloise, as sure as I'm writing you this letter, in two months, Danny had turned the old Churchill place into a dude ranch. Made me into a cowboy. Even had me wearing them fancy chaps. Darn near froze to death until I found out you were supposed to wear pants under them. <laughs> then one day, just before the grand opening, a swell-looking dame walked up to me and said, uh, Well, hello there, handsome. You the boss? <laughs> no, no, he's inside. I'll take you to him. Say, you don't talk like a westerner. Where are you from? Uh, Brooklyn. <laughs> well, you like Brooklyn better than Arizona, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Things is peppier, and people don't waste words when they talk like they do here. Waste words? Yeah. Out here, they say, hi, what's cooking? In Brooklyn, you just walk into a friend's apartment and say, hi. <laughs> you can smell what's cooking. <laughs> In here. Hey, hey, Danny, lady to see you. Okay. Well, what can I do for you, miss? My name is Frisco Kate. I heard you needed a singer for this place and someone to run the gambling room. You want the singing job, huh? And the gambling room. Hey, hey that's a new idea. Never, never thought of women as gamblers. Why not? We marry men, don't we? <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Hey, uh, a lady croupier might be a novelty at that. I'll try it for a week and see what the boys think. Probably the same thing they always think. But I can take care of myself. <laughs> Okay, Kate. Mulligan will show you to a room. Now, this way, miss. I'll take your bag. Mm, I think I'm gonna like it here. <laughs> well, uh, don't look at me, lady. I'm the answer to a Brooklyn maiden's prayer. <laughs> well, hello, Danny. Oh, hello, Molly. Have you heard the news, Danny? They shot another sheriff. You know, that's beginning to get monotonous. But uh, sit down, Molly. I, I want to talk to you. What about? Our future. Our future? Mm-hmm. Got it all arranged. A swell little house in Long Island. A kitchen where you can... Say, can you cook? No, oh, never mind. No use spoiling things before we uh, get started. Oh, Danny, don't you ever take life seriously? I wonder what would have happened to you if you'd lived when men earned their living by the sweat of their brows. Well, I'd have sold handkerchiefs. <laughs> and you're wrong, Molly. I could be serious about you if you'd, if you'd let me. Embrace me, my sweet embraceable you. Embrace me, you irreplaceable you. Just one look at you, my heart grew tipsy in me. Not the gypsy in me. I love all the many charms about you. Above all, I want my arms about you. Don't be a naughty. Papa do my sweet embraceable you. I've never felt like this about any girl before. Molly, will you marry me? Oh, now you're just being silly. No, I'm not. I mean it. Please marry me, Molly. Just this once. Oh, <laughs> Embrace me, my sweet embraceable you. Embrace me, you irreplaceable you. In your arms, I find love so delectable. I'm afraid it isn't quite respectable. But hang it, come on, let's glorify love. Ding dang it, you'll 
would shout on Don't be a naughty baby. Come to baby, come to baby, do my sweet embrace. You. Before we hear the second act of tonight's show, here's a sound I'm sure you'll recognize. Yes, that's the sound of the locomotive whistle, one of the friendliest, most familiar sounds in all the land. The next time you hear that sound, soft and low across the distance, you might remember that even to blow the whistle costs money. Not much, of course, just a fraction of a cent for each toot of the whistle. But small as the amount is, it costs just about twice as much now as it did before the war. And what's true of even so small a thing as the cost of whistling is true of the cost of almost everything else about running a railroad. Since 1939, wage rates, which railroads pay, and prices of things they buy and use have practically doubled. That's more than twice as much as the increase in railroad rates. The events of the war and of the peace which has followed it have shown us all that the defense of this country and its agriculture, commerce, and industry demand efficient, adequate, dependable rail transportation. Good and adequate transportation depends upon adequate earnings, the sort of earnings which come when revenues are in line with costs. Such earnings will justify and encourage continued investments in improved equipment and facilities, which are the foundation of better service at the most economical cost. Now back to Girl Crazy, starring Doris Day, Joan Edwards, your host Gordon McRae, and William Bendix. Looks like this is going to be a long letter, Eloise. But I got to tell you what that gangster cowboy Lank Sanders did the day before Danny opened his new dude ranch. Churchill, I want to talk to you alone. And I'll wait outside, boss. No, no, stick around, Jake. Well, speak up, Lank. What's on your mind? I hear you're opening up a gambling room. That's right, tomorrow night. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to let you get away with it. This place of yours will just about ruin my place in Custerville. Good. I suppose you hear the new sheriff was shot? Yes, I did. That means there'll be a special election tomorrow. I'm the only man running. <laughs> and this place of yours won't have a chance after I'm elected. Well, then I'll get somebody else to run against you. Why, there ain't a man in this county dares run against me. It's too unhealthy a job to get. Think it over. <laughs> <laughs> well, sounds like he means business. Well, that's a good idea you had, getting somebody to run against him, but, uh, ooh, I don't know. Anybody who'd do it would have to be out of their head. A nincompoop, a dope. <laughs> Hi, fellas. Oh, well, yeah. Mulligan. <laughs> The very man. Mulligan, how'd you like to be a policeman? Oh, I get it. You want me to be the house detective here. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but I ain't built right for a job like that. I'm too tall for keyholes and too short for transoms. <laughs> well, it ain't that, Mulligan. Uh, how'd you like to be sheriff of this county? Sheriff? Sure, say, that might be fun. Good. I'll be your campaign manager. We'll go into town tomorrow, and you can spend the whole day making speeches. <laughs> May I have your undivided up attention, please? As you all know, I am running for sheriff today on a reform ticket. And believe me, reform is one subject I'm well schooled in. <laughs> Crooked politicians have been robbing you fellas long enough. It's time you gave me a chance. Now I want you folks to get out and vote. Exercise your franchise. Exercise it. Don't be seen walking around town with a flabby franchise. <laughs> How am I doing, boss? Oh, you're doing great. Uh-oh. Here comes Lank. Get ready for trouble. Uh, so, Mulligan, you try 
trying to beat me out of the sheriff job, eh? Well, I warn you, if you're elected, I'm going to kill you. Still want to be sheriff? Uh, no. No, uh, on second thought, it don't sound like a steady job. <laughs> well, boy, have you heard the news? Election's over. Let me shake your hand, Sheriff Mulligan. Uh-oh. Sheriff, huh? Now get this, Mulligan, and get it straight. I'll give you just 20 minutes to get out of town. If you don't... <laughs> the next time, I won't be pointing my gun up in the air. As my friend Chester A. Riley would put it, what a revolting development this is. <laughs> Well, Eloise, a weaker man than me might have left town, like Lank said. But did I? No, sir. I hid all day. <laughs> that night, I sneaked back for the grand opening of the Dude Ranch. Danny had a big crowd on hand, and that Frisco cage sure know how to keep him entertained. <laughs> Days can be sunny with never a sigh. Don't need what money can buy. Birds in the tree sing their day full of song. Why shouldn't we sing along? I'm chipper all the day, happy with my lot. How do I get that way? Look at what I got. I got rhythm. I got music. I got my man who could ask for anything more. I got daisies in green pastures. I got my man who could ask for anything more. Oh, man, trouble. I don't mind. Won't find him around my door. I got starlight, I got sweet dreams. I got my man who could ask for anything more. Who could ask for anything more? I got rhythm, I got music. I got my gal who could ask for anything more. I got daisies in green pastures. I got my gal who could ask for anything more. Back door. I, I got, got the light, I, I got, got sweet dreams, I got my man who could ask for anything more, who could ask for anything more. Well, hiya, Katie. How's the party going? Mulligan! Shh, not so loud. I'm wanted for murder. Who have you killed? Nobody. Lank wants to murder me. But I had to see how Danny's party was going. Hey, that was some number you just sung. What a voice. You got some sustenuto. And the timbre of your vibrato is allegro for pissimo. <laughs> Why, Mulligan, what talk? What's the matter? Did I say something vulgar? <laughs> well, Kate, how's everything at the table? Well, I'm raking it in as fast as the suckers can shell it out. Oh, good. Oh, excuse me, Kate. There's Molly just coming in. Okay, boss. Mulligan, you better get out of sight in case Lank shows up. Go someplace where nobody can see you. No, okay, I'll go in the bar. Everybody in there is half blind. <laughs> Hello, Molly. Glad you came tonight. So am I. It's been most enlightening, Mr. Churchill. Mr. Churchill? Molly, what's the matter? I've just had the pleasure of meeting an old friend of yours from New York. Mr. Sam Mason. Sam Mason? Yes, and he told me some very interesting things about you, Mr. Churchill. Mr. Mason informs me that there's a young lady waiting for you in New York who also expects to occupy that little house on Long Island. Oh, now, Molly, that's not true. Tess used to be Sam's girl, and I dated her a few times. That's why he's trying to get even with me. Don't you believe me, Molly? No. But you must. And why must I? Because I love you. For the first time in my life, I know what it means to be really in love. 
Am I not a man who's normal, my dear? You don't need to be so formal, my dear. There's just one way to cheer me. Come to Danny, come to Danny, do. My sweet embraceable you. What do you say, Molly? Let's get married tomorrow. I'm sorry, but I won't be here tomorrow. Why? Where are you going? To Mexico. Sam's driving me to the races at San Luis. You can't go to Mexico with Sam Mason. I know his tactics with women. Well, they don't seem to be much worse than yours. Goodbye, Mr. Churchill. Molly! Molly! Watch it, Molly! Out of my way, boss! Frank Sanders is after me! Well, go in the closet in my office and put on an Indian costume you'll find there. Blank will never know you. But hurry, we're driving to San Luis. Yeah, okay, boss. Thanks. Oh, Mulligan! I you after. Have you seen Danny? I've taken in over six grand, and he'd better put it in the safe. Yeah, well, here, give it to me. I'll be seeing him in a couple of minutes. Okay. Thanks, Mulligan. All right. Now, let's see. Which closet did he mean? Oh, here it is, right here. Blanket, feathers, everything. Oh, better put it on. <laughs> oh, those feathers tickle, baby. Oh, no wonder they're supposed to go on my head. Oh, wow. There. Say, I look like a genuine Navajo. Uh-oh. Mulligan! Mulligan! Now, where'd that guy go? Hey, Chief, you seen Sheriff Mulligan? How? <laughs> oh, can't speak English, eh? Huh? How? Too bad. Somebody ought to warn Mulligan. I know he's here, and I'm aiming to ventilate his vest. And how? <laughs> I'll just hide in this closet, and when Mulligan shows up, I'll let him have it. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Everything okay, Rain in the Face? Go get the car started, will you? Ugh. Ugh. What's the matter with you? Ugh, uh, ugh, uh, I said clay, I said clay. I know you found the suit in the closet. What about it? Ugh, pale face, lanky pale face in the acid clay. Now, look, I haven't time for any more clowning. Kate told me she gave you six grand to give me. Where is it? Ugh, ugh, ugh. Will you talk English, Mulligan? That did it. <laughs> oh! Lang! Look out of my way, Danny! Stop running around that desk, you coward! Why don't you get shot like a man? This is no time to get reclassified. <laughs> Pass me that Tommy Hawk, Mulligan. Go round again. Okay, here you are, boys. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it was nice going, boss, but what happened? Uh, you're Tommy Hawk. Uh, I scalped him. <laughs> now let's get my car and get going. Uh. Hey, look. There's Molly. She's getting ready to leave in Sam Mason's car. Hurry. Molly! Molly, wait! You're not going to Mexico with Sam, Molly. You're going with me. That's what you think. That's what I know. Sorry, but I promised Sam, and I keep my promise. Let's go, Sam. Molly! Molly! I had to go girl crazy over someone who could not be true. I Today you will hear folks talking almost as much about high prices as they do about the weather. And when it comes to having to pay higher prices, railroads are just like other folks. I'll take for one example the one item of cross ties. To a railroad, cross ties are as essential as bread is to your family. More than 40 million of them have to be put into the tracks every year. Before the war, a cross tie in the track cost about $2. Now it costs around $4, just about twice as much. And that's typical of what has happened to the prices railroads must pay all along the line. Increase in prices, whether they're the prices of the things you buy for your family or the prices of the things railroads need, did not start with higher railroad rates. When the war ended, railroad freight rates were no higher than when it began, and in many cases they were lower. 
Prices had already gone up more than 50% before the first post-war increase was made in railroad freight rates. And the total increase in railroad rates since 1939 has been only one-third as much as the average increase in the prices of all the things you buy. No, railroad freight rates have not led the way to higher prices. Instead, they have lagged behind, way behind. Our nation needs railroads which are strong and healthy. That's the only kind of railroads which can produce adequate transportation at the lowest possible cost in time of peace and which can meet national needs in time of war. And the only way to have railroads which are strong and healthy is to have railroads whose revenues keep pace with increased costs. The Railroad Hour show train will return in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. Here's the last act of Girl Crazy, starring Doris Day, Joan Edwards, your host Gordon McRae, and William Bendix. Hang on, Eloise. I'll finish this letter up in a couple of more pages. But I got to tell you about that trip we took to Mexico. When Danny and I arrived at the hotel in San Luis, Frisco Kate met me in the lobby. Well, Mulligan, I see you got here all right. Yeah, Kate, but the way Danny drove, it's a miracle. All the way down here, my entire life kept flashing before me. Were you scared? No, I was having too much fun looking at the pictures. (laughs) Well, Molly had me go with her and Sam to chaperone, and what a ride that was. Sam kept hugging the curves all the way, only they were Molly's. The poor kid's disgusted already, wishes she hadn't come. Oh, what about you? I think I'm going to have a wonderful time. Just think, Mulligan, we're alone together, you and I. Yeah, well, don't try nothing. I know how to protect myself. (laughs) Ah, don't be like that. Say something nice to me. All I got to say to you is hasta luego, adios, auf Wiedersehen, and a slight touch of all reverie. (laughs) But all that means goodbye. (laughs) Blunt, ain't I? (laughs) <laughs> Look, Mulligan, uh, wouldn't you like to settle down with someone who'd be your constant companion? Never leave your side? Worship you? Oh, I got a dog that does all that. <laughs> oh, but could your dog cook breakfast for you? No, but would you bark if there was a burglar in the house? <laughs> Look, Kate, you don't want me. There's insanity in my family. Yeah, honest. Why, why I even got an uncle that thinks he's a racehorse. Well, just thinking he's a racehorse isn't so bad. Well, maybe not to you, but the family always bets on him to win, and he keeps coming in second. (laughs) Now, leave me alone. Go on, scram, scram. What a man. Treat me as rough as you like, Mulligan. I love it. Treat me rough, muss my hair. Don't you dare to handle me with care. I'm no innocent child, baby. Make me woolly and wild Treat me rough, pinch my cheek Kiss and hug and squeeze me till I'm weak I've been pampered enough, baby Keep on treating me wrong Treat me rough, wash my hair Don't you ever dare to handle me with care I am no innocent child, baby Make me woolly Treat me rough. Treat me rough, must my hair. Don't you dare to handle me with care. I'm no innocent child, baby. Make me woolly and warm. Make me woolly and warm. Treat me rough. Treat me rough. Pinch my cheek. Pinch my cheek. And hug and squeeze me till I'm weak. I've been pampered enough, baby. So keep Keep on. Treating me wrong. Okay, 
You don't know where Molly is, do you? She's in the coffee shop, Danny, trying to quiet her nerves. Shall I tell her you want to see her? No, no. She evidently doesn't want to see me, and if that's the way she wants things, it's okay. Well, you're the boss, boss, but if you ask me, that's not the way she wants things. See you later. That's the way to treat women, boss. Be tough. Look at me. I got Frisco Kate biting the hand that's feeding her. <laughs> uh, forget it, Mulligan. By the way, you'd better give me that $6,000. I'll have the clerk put it in the hotel safe. Uh, okay, boss. Here you are. Uh-oh. Here's Molly. Oh, hello, Danny. I guess you're pretty angry with me, aren't you? No. No, I'm not angry. But your boyfriend Sam will be if you leave him flat. Mulligan, I'm going to get our bags out of the car. The whole trouble is, Molly, I, I took too much for granted. Oh, Mulligan. <laughs> Mulligan, what can I do? Now that I found out that I'm really in love with Danny... Too late. Ah, well, well, crying ain't gonna help. He won't like you any better with a red nose. Come on, can't you smile a little? There's nothing to smile about, Mulligan. They're writing songs of love, but not for me. A lucky sky above, but not for me. With love to lead the way I found more skies of gray Than any Russian play could guarantee I was a fool to fall And get this way I hope And though I can't dismiss the memory of his kiss, I guess he's not They say the West is swell, but not for me. It's great for Digger O'Dell. But not for me I'm gonna make my will Cause back in Custerville Those guys are out to kill a sap like me It's such a healthy spot But not for me This job is much too hot And not for me Each sheriff wears a vest of lilies on his chest And boy, that's not for me He's knocking on a door But not for me They dug a six by four And that's for me The spot for me. Mulligan. Mulligan. Jake, what are you doing here? Well, right after you left, Lank got in his car and followed you. Lank is here. Ooh, I'm going to dig a hole and disguise myself as a gopher. Molly, Molly! Come quickly, everybody. Danny's lying out by the cars. Someone detect him. Danny! Right then, Eloise, I realized what a dumb bunny I am. It was Danny and his six grand that Lincoln followed, not me. Fine sheriff I turned out to be. I was too ashamed to face him, so I slipped out, headed for the edge of town, and hopped a freight train. I was all set to ride out of town when... <laughs> the train bumped, and I knocked my head against the side of the car. Then I realized the train wasn't going nowhere. So it was just hooking on cars. I was about to scram when the car door slid open. And in crawled the last person I wanted to be caught in a boxcar with. Lance Sanders. I tried to be very quiet. But just then the train bumped again. And... Oh! Who's there? I said, who's there? Moo. Funny, this didn't look like a cattle car. Moo. That reminds me of 
reminds me, ain't had anything to eat since I left Custerville. Sure could go for some nice, fresh milk. <laughs> Here, bossy. Nice, bossy. Where's that fool critter? I can't see a thing in the dark. Move any closer and I'll let you have it. <laughs> Mulligan, is that you? Well, it ain't William Bendix. <laughs> well, ain't this chummy. I hated the thought of leaving this town without getting rid of you. Don't do it, Lank. Think of my poor old wire-haired, uh, white-haired mother. <laughs> Stop kissing my hand. I'm gonna let you... Go. Lank. Mike, are you hurt? Well, what do you know? He's out cold. <laughs> it's a good thing he bumped his head against the side of the car. I might have had to get a little tough with him. <laughs> please, please, that's enough. I appreciate all the celebrating in my honor, but let's quiet down. I'll be hoarse for a week. Oh, Mulligan, I'm so proud of you. Yeah, me too, Kate. And for capturing Lank and getting back Danny six grand, I'm going to let you marry me. What an honor. I should have known that you'd taken after Lank to recover my money for me, Mulligan. I shouldn't have doubted you. I guess I, I just couldn't think straight. Oh, don't worry, darling. From now on, you're going to have a wife to do your thinking for you. Oh, Molly. You got it easy, Molly. Why, I've got to bark if there's a burglar in the house. Kate! I love all the many charms about you. Above all, I want my arms about you. Don't be a naughty baby. Come to Papa, come to Papa, do. So, Eloise. I'm afraid you lost your boyfriend to Kate. Very truly yours, Skeeter Mulligan. My Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gordon McRae giving a special vote of thanks to our guest stars, William Bendix, Doris Day, and Joan Edwards. And to Alan Reed and Jess Kirkpatrick for their fine performances in our production of Girl Crazy by Guy Bolton and Jack McGowan. With lyrics by Ira Gershwin, music by George Gershwin, and adapted for radio by Mr. Bill Demling. Next week, the show train will arrive in the same tracks at the same time. And on board will be Miss Dinah Shore and Mr. Leon Arrow to join me in bringing you Jerome Kern's Sally. All aboard! Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, good night. Crazy has been presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae appeared on this program by arrangement with Warner Brothers. William Bendix will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, The Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. Doris Day appeared through the courtesy of Michael Curtiz Productions. This is Marvin Miller speaking. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by 132 railroads of the United States. Each one of them has its own operations and services. Each one competes keenly with others for business. But all of them work together through the Association of American Railroads for the improvement of all railroading and for better service to you. Yeah.